wherever you may be and however you may be listening live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Christine Leahy is joining, joining me. Yeah. I, had a ch- I had a chance last night to go to that game. Doug Gottlieb. Oh, right. We actually both had a chance to go to that game, but you turned it down. So. Boy, I am glad I did. I would have been miserable at that place last night. I know. Night. I can't even believe you showed up to work today. Was... It does make me think of just like a few things, though, that happened on the show yesterday that we should address at some point today. Well, we'll probably, I'll probably have to address. Let me start hmm. with this. Here's some really bad numbers for Cleveland. If you're a Cavs fan this morning, this is why you're thinking, yikes. Golden State had four turnovers. <laughs> that's not good. That's not, that's not good at all. Because sports is pretty simple. It really is pretty simple. I've always said this about the NFL. Get the right quarterback. Then there's only two things to do that you really need to work on all the time. Make your quarterback comfortable and theirs uncomfortable. That's the NFL. You could butcher a lot. If you get the quarterback right and work really hard on building a nice O-line for him, And then on the other side of the ball, make sure their quarterback's always uncomfortable. Veterans, pass rushers, interior defenders, good corners. Football's kind of simple. Basketball's the same. The team that will win this championship will sense comfort far more than discomfort. Yeah, I know. Most of the Cavs not named LeBron and Kyrie Irving shot poorly. Some had bad nights. Klay Thompson didn't play well either. But that's a really bad number. How does a surfer fall off a wave? It just gets a little fast for him or her. Last night, Golden State showed virtually no discomfort. Cleveland, I double-checked this, didn't have a steal. (laughs) That has to be an NBA record. Four turnovers, one team, no steals for the other. That's a bad sign for Cleveland. Here is a good sign for Cleveland. All right, let's make it feel better now. These two teams blow each out. They they blow each other out all the time. Just in the finals in the last three years, Cleveland's lost by 21, 13, 15, 33, 11, and last night, 23. And right now, they're tied one finals apiece. And you could argue if Kyrie Irving would have been healthy, it'd be 2-0 uh, Cleveland. Okay, so the bad numbers, four turnovers, really, really concerning if you're a Cavs fan. Spread the court, look faster, open shots, open dunks. Who's got Durant? Nobody, apparently. The good numbers is, hey, these teams blow each other out. When you have this many Hall of Famers and this many great shooters and this many all-stars, what happens when these two teams play And it happens a lot. One team gets rolling, the other's not hot, and the other team's out of it quickly. Never forget, three times in last year's finals, Cleveland also blew out Golden State. In the last three finals, the Cavs have been smoked by these guys multiple times. Never forget, last year it was Golden State 2-0 after two games, average margin 24. Last night, 22. Let's not overreact. But here's something that should worry you. It's not that Kevin Durant had 38 points. It's that he shot 55% and didn't have a turnover. Way too easy. Listen, Golden State did not lose a game in the playoffs. And Cleveland only lost one. But there were a handful of games, especially against Indiana, a couple against Boston, where it was uncomfortable for Cleveland. We're getting into a point now, I'm trying to find five-minute segments where the Warriors look uncomfortable. Cavs didn't have a steal. Golden State, four turnovers. Kevin Durant, 55%. Mistakes come from discomfort. That's where they come from. Last night, there was never a moment, not a singular moment, where I felt Golden State 
was uncomfortable. That isn't about tweaking. You have got to make a massive change or this series is going to be over in a heartbeat. Uh, let me segue to this. Um, Kevin Durant did not play for this team last year. Kevin Durant obviously played for Oklahoma City. So during the season, we've now discovered, Christine, is that Golden State was recruiting Kevin Durant during the season. Texts, calls, and when the season ended, eh, they all flew out and they met him, right? Right? I was not at that sales pitch. But stories have come out of the sales pitch about how the Warriors sold Kevin Durant. And they told him, listen, going to be easier here. Basketball should be fun. Right now in Oklahoma City for you, it's not as much fun. You complain to coaches, you complain to front office, you complain to Westbrook. Basketball is going to be fun. That's what it should be. When you started playing when you were seven, eight years old, it was fun, right? Basketball is fun. You go to the gym, you can't wait. You sweat, you have fun. You win, you lose. It's fun. If Steve Kerr, during that sales pitch, would have walked into that room, he had Steph Curry to his left and Draymond Green to his right and Clay Thompson, wherever they were, and they probably walked into, you know, the room was obviously, you know, there was some size to it. These are tall guys. So you figure they walk into, if not a conference room, they walk into, you know, if you went to the Marriott or you went to a hotel, they have those rooms you can sit in and pitch people, right? If Steve Kerr would have said, listen, Kevin, we want you to come play for us. And our video department for the Warriors did something totally cool. We're up in Silicon Valley, so we have this technology sometimes before the rest of the world has it. And uh, so we went to Silicon Valley. We went to uh, uh, Oracle, Apple, one of these companies, whatever the company, Facebook, because we knew we told them during the year, Kevin, we told them during the year, hey, we want to recruit Kevin Durant from that team and bring him to us. And so Apple said, hey, we've got this super cool idea. This is not impossible, right? I'm not saying this happened, but I'm saying if if Steve Kerr's smart guy and they're up by Silicon Valley. And Steve Kerr says, so we went to our video department and our video department went to Apple. And we found a game between us, the Warriors and LeBron and the Cavs. And what we were able to do is superimpose you into the game so you can see what it's like actually to play for us if we ever met LeBron in the finals. And and, and watch, here's what it looks like. It would have looked like last night. It would have looked like last night. The presentation would have been (laughs) wide open jumpers. They can't get a hand on you. Total mismatch with Kevin Love. We'll be running on the fast break and our point guards pass. You'll have multiple uncontested slam dunks. You won't shoot 48%. You'll shoot closer to 55% here, and you'll take three or four fewer shots a game and have way more fun. Did you watch Kevin Durant last night? We live in a country where the sales pitch never quite delivers, right? You always get the sales pitch from the company. The company can be good. The product's pretty good. It's never quite as good as the promise and the pitch. This is why I think Russell Westbrook MVP is a joke. Who would bail on anything that valuable? If you were a chef and you said, you know, this kitchen utensil is the most valuable thing I have as a chef. I think I'll bail on it. Butter is my most valuable ingredient. I put it in everything. I think I'll bail on it. I'm a, I'm a carpenter. I have this drill bit, this saw, this drill. It's the most valuable saw I have. I think I'm going to give it away. Nobody bails on valuable. Nobody sells beach property in Los Angeles. Westbrook made it harder. Nothing that's truly valuable makes life harder. Chefs don't bail 
on valuable utensils because that utensil makes their job easier. That's why Westbrook MVP is a joke. You bail on stuff that becomes annoying and frustrating. If the Warriors would have created a sales pitch from Silicon Valley, putting KD into a game against LeBron last night is what it would have looked like. And God, if I'm Kevin Durant, how many times last night were you thinking to yourself, he is the world's best player? Even as LeBron played well, when you give somebody the ease and the fun and you allow them to have weapons at their disposal and you're not annoying and you're not difficult and you don't subtract, you add. Have you ever watched Kevin Durant play in your life? And this Cleveland team, they ain't bad, folks. This Cleveland team's good. Have you ever seen Durant against a good team score more effortlessly and easily? He had more open looks last night than he did in series at the other place. See, I don't think this has anything to do with Russell Westbrook. And last night made me feel more so that way. I think we have to call it what it is. He wanted to win a championship, and this was the easiest route to winning a championship. And like to each his own, if that's what he wants to do, I'm not going to knock him for it. But that is what it was. He was very close to going to a different team. He knew he couldn't win right away with them. And so he chose the easy route. Why was it easier? Because they have a super team. It's a great team that already made it to the finals the year before and won the year before that. He was on a team that made it to the finals. Way before that, though, with a different roster. Well, that trophy will be handed out to Mr. Valuable. Very discouraging. Now, now I don't think we should go overboard on last night, but I do want to give you. Me? No, no, the world. Oh, the world, okay. An interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. Let's not, I see the headlines this morning. It's just crazy people everywhere. It's over, embarrassing, humiliation. These teams both blow each other out. That's what they do. Go look at the numbers. Go look at every game they've met in the finals. 11, 23, 33, 16, 19, 8. Couple overtime games. By and large, last year in the finals, game seven was the good game. The rest of them were awful. This is what these two teams do to each other. This is what they do. Hall of Famers, three-pointers everywhere. One team gets rolling, the other team waves a flag. We're out today. We're just going to go to the bench. This is what they do to each other. Don't overreact. You know how much I love perky jerky? Eat it consistently and constantly. Now I have another meat obsession. They have their new 100% grass-fed beef sticks. Unbelievable. And a variety of flavors. Jam and Jamaican, Tasty Teriyaki, the original Pale Ale's great. Can't stop eating them. I challenge you, anybody to find a better tasting meat stick out there. And right now, a special offer. PerkyJerky.com, code HERD, gets you 40% off. I'm projecting here, Christine. I'm not saying I have the answers. I'm projecting forward. This is fun. This is what sports radio should be. Are you changing your projections? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just projecting forward. Okay. I could literally come in every day and talk about what just happened. But part of the fun of this job is guessing who you draft and guessing who you pick in the NFL and predicting who wins and loses games. We've, I've never had a problem being wrong. I'm wrong at home all day long. What do I care? I'm going to project forward. So Golden State now is 13-0 in the playoffs. <laughs> They've had one close game. <laughs> like they're crushing everybody. And that last night, the average margin so far for them has been 17 points. And a lot of people think Golden State's going to just run through Cleveland. So let's project. My buddy Jason Whitlock's like, it's going to be four or five games. I watched the, yesterday I watched all sorts of networks, four or five games. Golden State's going to roll. I think it's Cleveland in seven, but what if I'm wrong? So let's, let's project forward to have some fun. Let's say Golden State beats Cleveland quickly. I'll say it's five, but it's three or four blowouts. And they're 16-0 and or 16-1 and in champions with an 18 to a 19-point margin. So let's project that happens. It's not the most unrealistic thing in the world. These two teams both blow each other out a lot. So here's one thing that would absolutely happen. I'll give you an absolute, and it could happen. Here's the absolute. Kevin Love's going to be back on the trade market. He has a very movable contract, and he looked slow last night against Kevin Durant. 
Durant's not going to suddenly get worse, and Love's going to get a lot faster and more athletic. Kevin Love, an absolute, if they got swamped here, would be back on the trade market. They would look for youth, speed, athleticism, Jimmy Butler, length, Porzingis, something. That would be an absolute if this series is quick. That's an absolute. You know that. I know that. They're not getting rid of LeBron. They're not getting rid of Kyrie. Okay? And there's, there's a bunch of, you know, backup guys that are going to be musical chairs here for the next 10 years. Tristan Thompson's close to LeBron. Uh, they're represented by the same company. Tristan's young, more athletic, played like crap last night. But they're not getting rid of him either. Kevin Love would be out. Because Kevin Love's the guy that could stop uh, Kevin Durant. And if Durant dominates the series. So that's the absolute. And LeBron's not a content guy. You know, he's, not, he's not a content guy. That's just not who he is. LeBron's never going to be content. So if, if, if Le- And LeBron's going to get on the phone. And when LeBron calls outside of Derrick Rose, most people answer the phone. Okay, that's the absolute. Here's the what if. Golden State rolls. LeBron gets on the phone and starts asking around. And Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cavs, says, no, no. He says, I'm paying two coaches already right now that you fired. I'm still paying David Blatt. I'm still paying Mike Brown. I paid Tristan Thompson max money. He's not a max player. I'm paying J.R. Smith double what he's worth. By the way, there's a story in January, ESPN. Tension between LeBron and Dan Gilbert is centered on payroll spending. James and Gilbert have different issues, different views on the issue. Okay, that's a real story that's already been published in January. So if they get swamped here, rolled, steamrolled, LeBron's not a I'm content guy. Kevin Love's going to be moving, and they're going to be looking to upgrade. And the kind of guys you'd like, Jimmy Butler, are really expensive. And last year... Dan already paid $54 million in luxury tax. You don't get that stuff back. Think about that. Also, think about this. Because the Eastern Conference is so weak, I own the team. Christine, you own the team. What is the downside to dominating the East if you're an owner? Well, the downside's obvious. Sweeps are fewer home games. So Dan Gilbert says, let me get this straight. I'm already paying for two coaches that you didn't want. They're on other teams now. Actually, Mike Brown's coaching against us, and I'm paying him. So I'm paying both the team's coaches in the finals. Fact. I'm paying Tristan 60% more than he's worth. JR double. I paid $54 million last year in luxury tax. Because you're sweeping all these games in the East... There's a chance I I only got eight home games in the entire playoffs. Eight. Boston got ten. They didn't get to the finals. Those home games are a million and a half, two million dollar checks into an owner's pocket. These owners, home games in the playoffs are two million dollar checks to the owner. They may, if they get swept here, get eight. That's it. Eight. Even if they lose in five, eight. Eight. Boston got more that didn't get to the finals. So I'm just throwing it out there. Are we are we talking about the Cavs blowing up their roster? No, 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 no. What the I'm, potential for what, this to happen? No, what I'm saying is they've already got the number one payroll in the league. Mm-hmm. They paid a record last year luxury tax. A mm-hmm. record. That's like two or three to one dollars. He has already gone and fired coaches. He's still paying for LeBron. He's got LeBron's buddies all over the roster. Dan Gilbert has made all these concessions. Rich guys at some point get tired of writing checks. By the way, Dan Gilbert's already got his title. He's not trying to be the GOAT. Dan Gilbert just wanted to win a title for Cleveland. He's got it. He doesn't need five. He doesn't need three. I'm not sure he needs two. I'm just throwing. Remember, this is a project segment. I'm just saying, we've already seen Dan Gilbert, the letter of LeBron, have real tension. We know that Gilbert made concessions to get him back. LeBron is never content. LeBron is chasing somebody. Gilbert's not. Gilbert's not trying to be the GOAT owner. He doesn't care about that. He got his title. He got his guy back. P. 
people love Dan Gilbert. What if he just says to LeBron, enough, bro, is enough. Somebody I know who I trust said this a year ago. Just because LeBron's coming back doesn't mean he's staying there. I know we all fell for that wait, song. Wait, 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 wait. I just remember talking about this yesterday. And this is a project segment. I, I get it, but we were talking about this yesterday, and what if the Warriors won last night and the Cavs lost? And I said, yes, the storyline is now going to become, is LeBron going to leave the Cavs? And you said we would not be discussing that on this show. And here we are, not even 24 hours later, discussing that on this show. This is what happens if the Warriors sweep. I'm coming home. Milwaukee. I'm coming home. Chicago. Tell the world I'm coming home. Back to Miami. Let the rain wash away. Philly. All the pain of yesterday. Mark Cuban Dallas. I know my kingdom away. Lakers. They've forgiven my mistake. New York's fun. Wow. I'm coming home. Denver. I'm coming home. Phoenix is sunny. Tell Colin. The world I'm you literally said yesterday that this would not be a thing, and now it's a thing. Hey. And I said, this is what we're going to talk about, and you said absolutely not. Today is different than yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I wish, I want, the t- I want the tape from yesterday where we had this what? exact discussion. Why can I not project? That's the fun of sports. Because that's what I said you were going, I projected yesterday that this was going to happen. I don't, Thursdays has never been a project day on the show. <laughs> oh my God. Friday's always a project day. This is the Herd Podcast. If you're Boston last night and you couldn't compete with Cleveland, and you watch Cleveland can't compete athletically with Golden State. What's going through your head right now? Danny Ainge, rebuilding project. What do the Lakers think watching that game? They don't have one player even as good as Draymond Green. Ian Clark off the bench probably would be their second leading, third leading scorer. Like if you're an NBA exec, you're a star player, you're a head coach. Watching Golden State take apart Cleveland last night, that effortlessly, that quickly. No steals for Cleveland, four turnovers for Golden State. I'm asking, I don't have an answer. But in college sports, you can go to Purdue. You can go to Oregon State. You can go to Iowa State. You can go to non-traditional powers, NC State in football. And you still feel like as an athletic director and a coach, as a player, as a coordinator, You're winning here. You're changing lives. But pro sports is mostly about money, and it's about titles. New England may be the best organization in the NFL, but if you told me Patriots or the field, Super Bowl next year, I'd take the field. I'd take the field. I mean, did you think Atlanta would end up in the Super Bowl? Did you think Dallas would be that good with Dak Prescott? There's a lot of surprises in the NFL. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay, Brady, New England, they're going to be good. But if you were asked Packers or the field, you're taking the field. If I, was, if I was offered Packers New England or the field, I would take the field. We should call these the you're not close finals. <laughs> I mean, we went and looked this up this morning. 18 NBA teams, according to, a, according to was this Vegas? 18 NBA teams have less than 1% chance to win the title next year. Oklahoma City's at one and a half percent, and they have the MVP. Golden State against LeBron, they played him three hours, had four turnovers. Golden State beat a team late second quarter. It felt like it was over. That was 12 and one against the East. The not close vinyls. Yeah, these are the uh, NBA title odds next year. Warriors have a 65% chance. Cavs, 29, and, and it, it dwindles. Listen, the Bucks. people are like, I like where Milwaukee's going. They've got less than a 3% chance. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's encouraging or discouraging. Uh, I, I am a fan of dynasties. Never had a problem with them. But uh, that was a little wow last night. Catch the herd from noon to 3 Eastern on iHeartRadio and FS1. I will say this. LeBron and... Durant have a certain affection for each other. You saw it during the game. This is not Westbrook, KD. It's not LeBron, KG. They're, they're, these guys like each other. 
don't make this LeBron against Durant. We know who the superior player is, okay? Let's slow down. If it wasn't for LeBron, KD wouldn't be in these finals. LeBron beat the Warriors. That's why the Warriors went after KD. They want to create a super team. If the Warriors won, is the owner going to spend the money on KD? Secondly, LeBron's decision changed this nonsense idea of loyalty in the NBA, which is the, the owners would love for the players to be loyal. They love the loyalty thing. They're not loyal. They get rid of employees, businesses. They go from Seattle to Oklahoma City. Billionaires won't spend $300 million on a new arena in downtown Seattle. This nonsense about loyalty is ridiculous. Owners aren't loyal to anybody. They're loyal to owners. So the reason KD is in Golden State is, LeBron paved the way for this stuff. KD should thank LeBron um, because what you saw last night is like artistic basketball at a different level. Let me bring in Chris Mannix. He is a senior writer for The Vertical. He is an NBA voice, <laughs> knowledge meister. No. What did you make of that Cleveland's defense? It didn't have a steal, right? Like something's – and now he's sort of joking about, you know, we got to guard KD next game. What would you make of it? Well, it's a lot of what I saw during the Eastern Conference playoffs and a lot of what I saw during the season. There was a reason that they came in ranked 21st in efficiency. They don't have a lot of plus defenders out there. And it's fine if you can do that against the beat-up Toronto Raptors, against a Boston team that doesn't have a wing score. But when you are faced with the type of offense they're faced with, I don't know how any of this is surprising. I mean, they were carved up at times during the regular season. This is just a continuation of that. This is just what we saw during the season magnified by a great team. We know LeBron's chasing things, the GOAT. If they lose, and let's say they lose in five, and there's three or four blowouts, they're not getting rid of Kyrie Irving, and Tristan Thompson's probably locked in for a while with that contract. Kevin Love's contract's more movable. Let's project a little. They lose. Now they've got to win four of the next six. Um, would love to be back on the market. I mean, I watched last night, Chris. He does look like the unathletic one on that wing. Yeah, he'd be back on the market, but would he? where would he go? That's my next question. Like, where would he go? Who would you trade him to? And what would you get back in return for him? If you want to deal him, like I heard you bring up Porzingis there. I mean, that would be a gift from God if Porzingis was ever traded there. But that's that's not something the Knicks would ever consider in a situation like that. You might be able to get Jimmy Butler because Butler, I think, is going to be on the block in the next few weeks and months. But how much better does that make you when you're faced up with a Golden State team? I think it's entirely possible we see Kevin Love in trade rumors. It's It happens every year, almost every six months. But I don't know how much closer that gets you. Honestly, you know, we can sit here and, and debate the, 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 what they do to get better. I don't know how anybody touches this Warriors team. I don't know what the Cavs can do, what Boston could do, what any team in the East or West can really do to touch this Warriors team. They're that good on both ends of the floor. So you like Golden State convincingly. My yeah, friend. I said in five. I said coming in, it would be a five-game series, largely because largely because I saw, I saw Boston. And look, it's a little crazy, but if they were in better condition, like they weren't in great shape, I didn't think. If, if guys like you know Marcus Smart and others were in better condition – they could have won that series. I really believe that because they win game three. They're up 16 in game four. It, they're playing that Jimmy Chitwood pass offense, which was getting the job done against Cleveland. If they had just been able to continue what they were doing there and they'd have to be in better shape to do it, I think they could have won that series. I really do. I'm just, I'm just not as high on Cleveland here. What do you think the repercussions are um, of Golden State? Adam Silver, the commissioner, was on my show a couple days ago, and he even he acknowledged, listen, if it's a sweep Golden State, <laughs> that, that's an imbalance that nobody wants in this league. If it does go five, that's an imbalance. Nobody's close. If Cleveland's not close and LeBron's not close, I mean, LeBron's lost finals, he's close. If he loses it the first time in his career and it's not even competitive, what does it do to the Chris Pauls? What does it do to the Gordon Haywards? Is there a ramification, a reverb or something? Well, I think there's already a potential. You named Gordon Hayward there. I think there's already a potential ramification there because part of Boston's pitch to Gordon Hayward, I believe, is going to be, look, you're in the Western Conference. We saw you against uh, Golden State. You were wiped out in four games. You come over to us, and maybe we can't beat the Warriors right now, but we took one game off Cleveland, and you saw what we were lacking. We were lacking perimeter shooting. We were lacking a second 
second and third scoring option. You come here, and we're that much closer to knocking off the Cavaliers. We'll worry about the, the Warriors later, but we're that much closer to whacking, uh, to knocking off the Cavaliers. I think that's going to be a big selling point for Boston, along with Brad Stevens. And that's why I think Gordon Hayward, to me, is the biggest name that could be on the move this summer. Chris Mannix, senior writer of The Vertical. Um, speaking of, well, I'll get to Boston in a second. I'm going to throw my crazy th- I'm projecting here. I know. I heard you early. But you can't just come in and do this for a living and just talk about what you saw. I agree. we got to guess who teams are going to draft. And that means I'm cr- I'm ridiculously off sometimes. But that's okay. I can take those arrows. <laughs> so Dan Gilbert's like, all right, I paid $54 million in salary. I got two. I'm paying for both coaches in the finals. I doubled Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith's value. I bring James Jones in. Um, you're sweeping everybody, so I'm going to have eight home games instead of 12 to 14. (laughs) Those are about a million and a half to two million in my pocket apiece. And you're asking me to get rid of love and and pay more for more pieces. You can't write that letter, Dan Gilbert, to LeBron. That was just a little too dark and a little too personal. LeBron hasn't completely forgotten about it. ESPN has an article in January saying there's tension between Gilbert and LeBron. Am I crazy to think That at some point, billionaires at some point get uncomfortable just writing checks. Gilbert's not chasing goat. He's got his title. Do you think we could have more attention, Gilbert and LeBron, if this is ugly and LeBron demands more and Dan says, dude, I'm tired of writing checks for you? Well, I think we could have more attention, but I I don't know... I, far be it for me to defend Dan Gilbert here, but what else do you want the guy to do? Oh, I'm saying you're I right. I mean, yeah, he's written as many checks as possible. Right. And this isn't baseball. You don't have an infinite salary cap to deal with. You're within res- uh, constraints here. And they got real lucky in, in that Darren Williams was available, that Kyle Korver was available. I thought David Griffin did a masterful job assembling this team. To me, if I'm Dan Gilbert, I'm pointing it back on LeBron. I'm saying, look, you know, Cleveland right now, they're, they're on the cusp of becoming like a souped-up Buffalo Bills. They really are because, wow. you know, they're, they're a team that can go through the Eastern Conference for the next four years, but this team, can you see them beating Golden State? Well, when I, Chris, when I watched that game last night, my takeaway is they're athletically old. Yes. They're, they're, they have no, a, and not, no plus defenders there. LeBron's a good defender. I think Iman Shumpert's seen better days, but the rest of that team, not a lot of plus defenders, whereas Golden State, the great players we're talking about offensively, they're also great defensively. Klay Thompson is great defensively. Draymond Green, even Durant, high-level defensive players, they're both ways. Cleveland is not both ways. But to just, to just address what you were asking me before, I would, if I'm Dan Gilbert, I say to LeBron, look, you've got to be a recruiter. You have got to get guys to take less money. You have got to put your John Calipari hat on, and you've got to be proactive there because I have no more money to spend. We paid all your guys. Tristan got his money. Kevin got his money. You want to trade Kevin Love? Tell me a deal that's going to make sense. You have to go out there and convince maybe a bought-out Carmelo Anthony or somebody else to take pennies on the dollar to come play with you because that's the only way I see Cleveland closing the gap with Golden State. LeBron doesn't want to hear that, Chris. That's the truth. It's, it's, I don't know what else Gilbert can do. And I'm not a Dan Gilbert defender. I thought the, the letter was dumb. And I think I think the fact that David Griffin doesn't have a contract extension is borderline criminal. But in this case, I side with him. Okay, so listen. My thing with Boston is 22 draft picks for Danny Ainge, no all-stars. There's about 30 all-stars right now in the world. They're all playing in the league. And 19-year-old University of Washington, his six or seven wins were against, like, Western Illinois directional schools, Panera Bread, places I've never heard of. Come on, Chris. Go take – give up these picks. Get a good player. Or – or you got a roster full of C-pluses. Make okay. them, make them be. Okay, I love this, Christine. I, I love this one. I love, okay. I love this. Is this you're you're from Boston too? That you get, well, get or, Chicago, but Boston. But yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're adopted. Uh-huh. Okay. So okay. get Lonzo Ball. Okay, no, that's lunacy. All right, <laughs> <laughs> this goes back to kind of the Golden State argument here. Like, if you're Boston, all right, you trade the first overall pick, you get Jimmy Butler, you get Paul George. Maybe you're better than Cleveland. Do those players make you better than Golden State? No. I don't I don't believe so. I don't put think they that don't puts either. you I don't think that puts you on par. What you're if you're Boston, you're playing the long game here. You're playing four years down the road. Forget Cleveland right now. You're trying to win championships. And the debate with Ball and Fultz is ridiculous. It's Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz, I believe, is the guy to the Boston brass so there. And they they all believe that he is going to be, I think, a transcendent top five type of point guard in the near future. And as a kid, 
You three, four years down the road, when he's 23, 24, when Jalen Brown, who is really good, Jalen Brown, I think, is going to be an all star level player. And maybe next year, Michael Porter in the draft. Tell me a team right now that's worse than the Brooklyn Nets next year. Tell me a team out there. Maybe Sacramento if they completely bought him out. So Boston's getting another number so one Boston pick. So Boston might get another number one pick. Now you have a team. And it, 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 it kind of sucks for Isaiah and for Al Horford because they're trying to win right now. They're in their primes. But if you're Danny Ainge, you have to look at this and say, this is my core. It's Jalen Brown, it's Markel Fultz, and it's Michael Porter or somebody else down the line. That's the team that three, four years from now, when Cleveland's long since passed and Golden State is faded, that's the team that's going to take over and be my super team. Okay, Chris. But I'm going to take it from a rich guy owner perspective. Okay. Okay, I'm the rich guy. So right now you're Danny Ainge. Can we have a graphic that says he's Danny Ainge and I'm a rich owner? (laughs) Okay, here's what I'm saying. Listen, Danny, if I go get veterans, because I think Cleveland's getting old, if I can get to two of the next three finals, that's great for the Celtics brand. I'm on TV for three weeks in the finals. It doesn't matter if I lose in five. Celtics finals. By the way, that also gives me as an owner, I'm going to get three or four home games. I make about two million bucks a game on that. So, yeah, this 19-year-old's great, but I can't really market him. He's not a star. I can sell more tickets and suites. I can raise suite prices because now we're a finals team. Come on, I'm the owner. All this stuff about future, I, I, I want to get, get to the finals in my lifetime. Danny? Dan, first of all, I don't think Wick Grosbeck, the owner of the Celtics, thinks like that. Okay. I, I think they are entirely championship-driven. And I also think you're... A year from now, we might be sitting here saying, wow, that Markel Fultz, he's already looking like an all-star caliber player. To me, this is the kid that steps in and is great right away. This is the kid that steps in and can play pick and roll in the NBA right away and score on all three levels. This is the kid that's a two-way player that develops rapport with Isaiah Thomas. I honestly think that a year from now, we're sitting here laughing about this conversation because of how good Fultz is going to be and how marketable he's going to be, how talented he's going to be. The Celtics, they don't think, let's get to to the finals and lose. They're thinking, how do we get to the finals for three, four, five consecutive years and win? And Markel Fultz keeping him and building this way is the best way to do it. Tell me what your sources think of Lonzo Ball. Oh, like him a lot. No, I, I think he's a almost a lock at number two. Uh, if if Fultz wasn't available, he'd probably be, depending on the team, uh, a lock at number one. He's I mean, I honestly wish he wound up in Phoenix. I mean, I think L.A. is a good place for him, but I would love to see Lonzo Ball and Devin Booker playing for the next 10 years. I think that would be, you know, a 50-point-per-game backcourt at one point that would rival C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard uh, up in Portland. But I think the Lakers are a great fit, and I think Ball, he, he's not a pick-and-roll player, which is a little bit different, and, and he's going to have to adjust in the NBA, but he can be the face of that Laker franchise. It's just that I think that highly of Fultz. I think people didn't see enough of him on TV. He was on a crappy Washington team. When he gets to the NBA, you were going to see the full breadth of his talent. It's Chris Mannix. Boy, you you really shot that Lonzo to the Celtics thing right out of the water. Between you and Leahy, I don't stand a chance I give you here. credit, because, though. I mean, but do you notice that we both are saying the exact same thing? I, I There's a reason you, for that. I give you credit, though. You, you got me fired up with the trade the pick. You were tweeting it. You've been talking about okay. it. You said trade the pick. I'm like, geez, God, Colin, you don't trade the pick. Do <laughs> not or trade or the, the pick. Idea that do not take a GM job. Do not take you stay keep this one. <laughs> the idea that they should have done absolutely anything to get Jimmy Butler. Uh, You're blowing no. up your future. No, 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 no. I like and Jimmy Butler. And who even said that that I was like an option? Quick, quickly, though, here's Paul George you might be able to get for nickels on the dollar. Because if he says no to the Pacers, no team but the Lakers is going to give up anything substantial. So if you can use a Crowder and a back-end pick to take a gamble. Spot-up shooter. But it's a gamble because he might say, I'm going to leave. But guys, they don't go to Boston or these winning franchises and be a part of it for a year and then walk away. You're not going to go to the Lakers and a losing team if you're that good. That would be the type of gamble I would take if the price is right uh, for a Paul George. Wouldn't you rather have a Gordon Hayward? Like rather have both yeah yeah no I mean, kidding <laughs> so uh good seeing you man you too have we ever met before i don't think so i really enjoyed this I yes got, you did i was there you did meet i got pummeled you met you met at a uh agent party oh hey, that's right john have you ever seen me this happy getting pummeled for 15 minutes oh, you seem <laughs> to really enjoy it it's kind of weird i felt like one of tyson's opponents for about four rounds but i really enjoyed it no black eyes or anything good meeting you too. for the second time